there have been protests happening in Cuba, right? And of course, the, the, rational, the rational response from the Americans is what? Oh, let's go bomb it. Yeah, let's just go bomb Cuba, right? Let's just bomb everything we don't like. So <laughs> I'm going to play you this, this clip from the Miami mayor, and you can take a listen to what he, he proposes the United States do with Cuba, right? And what should be being contemplated right now is a coalition of potential military action in Cuba, similar to what has happened in both administrations, in both Republican and Democrat administrations. In Republican with Bush in Panama, they deposed Noriega, and that country had peaceful democracy for decades. And you had interventions by, by Democratic presidents, uh, you know, taking out Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. It's a, a sovereign country where they took out a, a, a terrorist that probably saved thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives, and President Clinton in Kosovo intervening in a humanitarian issue uh, with airstrikes. So there have been many, many opportunities uh, in the are, history of- Are you of, suggesting of airstrikes in Cuba? What I'm suggesting is that that option is one that has to be explored mm -hmm. and cannot be uh, just simply discarded as, as an option that is not on the table. Um, and, and there's a variety of ways the military can do it, but that's uh, that's something that needs to be discussed and needs to be looked at as a potential option in addition to a variety of other options uh, that can be discussed. Yeah. I don't I don't know what that word salad was at the end. He's like, you know, that's like a Started an off option. as a protest for one man, former that's president like an Jacob option, Zuma. Today it know, has engulfed the and, entire uh, country. Business owners are complaining of an option and explore, right? Lots of options. He went on afterwards on NBC. Take a look at what, what, they, what they asked him over here, right? Take a look at this. Uh, I want to bring in Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, a Republican. Both his father and mother came to the United States from Cuba as children. Mayor Suarez, good to have you back. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. It, in an interview on another network on Tuesday, you said that the United States military uh, should consider airstrikes against Cuba. Why? No, what I said in another station was that there were uh, instances where different administrations had, uh, you know, considered military options in different the Dude, that's literally what you said. Why are you lying? That's literally what he said. You know, like we should consider airstrikes. Maybe there are other options, but that's definitely an option amongst the other options. You know, it's an option. We should go and bomb them. Let's kill him. <laughs> don't, don't you love how this guy is himself Cuban? You, you have this weird this weird uh, uh, phenomenon where you have exiled Venezuelans or exiled Zyri uh, Syrians or exiled um, Cubans, right? Who are, who are so bloodthirsty or Iranians as well, exiled Iranians who, who have like this, this bloodlust against their own country, right? Let's just go bomb it. Quick, Uncle Sam, let's go bomb it. Please, can we bomb it? Calm down. Have you lost it? it, it it's not just him. It's, it's Marco Rubio. It's Ted Cruz. Like they, they also, they got this bloodlust. Let's fucking bomb it. Yo, yo, have you not screwed Cuba enough? Have you not done enough? Jesus, do you never run out of bombs? Of course they don't. Here, let, let's take a look at Ted Cruz. When it comes to Cuba, it's not complicated. Here's what Joe Biden needs to say. The communist dictatorship in Cuba is evil. It is oppressive. They are murderers, they are torturers, and the people want freedom. The American people stand with the Cuban people. And, and unfortunately, the Biden administration has been lukewarm at best. Yeah, I, I really, I can't take you seriously. You're you and a senator, and you're accusing others of being torturers and murderers. I, come on, enough, enough, enough. Stop this, enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse because <laughs> it's not just the Miami mayor, right? Suarez. It's not just Ted Cruz. No, no, no. We have some other Republicans who, are, who also want to get that bloodlust in, right? Are you, are, you ready? are you ready for the man himself? You already know who it is. You already know who it is, man. Hey, hey, hey it's Mike Pompeo. <laughs> Look at this. He says, we know how to help the Cuban people. We did it for the Iranians. Let's do it. Oh, really? You did, huh? Right, because you're, you're, his idea of helping Iranians is starving them to death, right? Preventing them from uh, importing medication, uh, infrastructure parts, you know, just anything it is. Airplane parts, dialysis machines, you name it, right? Let's, let's screw their banking sector. We'll target their um, oil sector. We're, we'll 
completely ruin their their exports so they can't do anything with their their oil we'll make sure that they you know israel keeps getting uh, uh away with bombing them and sabotaging them yeah of course <laughs> mike pompeo is iran's best friend you didn't know this <laughs> let me just show you let me just remind you real quick how how mike pompeo helped iran right let, let's take a look here's the economic growth as soon as the sanctions uh hit right trump and by extension pompeo they leave the nuclear deal Right? In May 2018. Look at that. Look how they screwed the economy. Right? Now, of course, this is, again, not the best metric of how, how you know, a good standard, uh, standard of, uh, of living, GDP growth. But nonetheless, we have other metrics here. Look at the oil output. We've already taken a look at this. See how it plummets? So, yeah, that, that's Mike Pompeo's idea of helping, helping Iranians, right? That's his idea. He goes on, he goes on Fox I know, I know you have to suffer with me. I'm sorry. You, you, we have to watch this. Take a look. Supporting democracy at home to scowling at it abroad. You can always count on the American left to stand with the dictators, at least if they're anti-American. Wait, who is the American left? I, w I, wish, I wish she was talking about someone real. Who, who is the American left? I mean, you know who she's talking about here, right? Who she thinks she's talking about. Uh, Joe Biden, apparently. <laughs> and... They stand with dictators too, right? Whatever that means. Upon Fidel Castro's death, Jimmy Carter remarked that he and Rosalind remembered fondly their visits with him in Cuba and his love of his country. Obama continued that democratic tradition, attending a baseball game with Raul extolling Cuba's achievements in education and health care. Do you see how like disgusted she is? Their achievements in education. And healthcare, you know, those like terrible things that no society, no civilized society should ever have. Oh, <laughs> what is this brain dead bullshit? And the media even gets in the game. You know, who could forget Barbara Walters fawning 2020 interview with Castro? That was a classic. So it should come as no surprise that with the Democratic protests spilling out this weekend, the media, well, they look for a Cuban scapegoat. There's no question that the pandemic has made everything uh, much worse. People there are outraged over the country's coronavirus response. Their life has become intolerable during the pandemic. But the New York Times might have had the best reaction, writing that the protests were, were shouting freedom and other anti-government slogans. <laughs> Something tells me. Do you, do, you realize how, do you realize how she hasn't mentioned any sanctions? She, they, they specifically cut those out, and I know bec because we looked at them together, right? I mean, you barely had any reports mentioning sanctions, right? She didn't say, oh, look, look at these, these uh, Democrats. They're not talking about sanctions. They're, they're being untruthful. No, no, no. She's totally fine with it. They're all, they're all fine with it. There's no difference to a Republican Democrat, right? She, she's just angry that they blamed a little bit, a little bit of the economic crisis on, you know, COVID and pandemic, which is, you, I mean, this is um, true. This is applicable to virtually every nation, you could say in, you know, uh, in one dimension or another, right? But it's definitely not the biggest cause, and she knows that. So who does she bring on? Sometimes it's just being honest about where they stood. Joining me now, former Secretary of State, Fox News contributor, Mike Pompeo. Oh. Um, Secretary oh. Pompeo, the reaction oh. from the media, uh, the Democrats, the left, um, the left. has been, I think, quite <laughs> revealing to people who've forgotten that they were doing the same kind of thing, you know, with the Soviet Union back in the 80s when I was in college. Yes, Laura, thanks for having me on the show. It's absolutely the case. Uh, they've pointed the finger at COVID. They've, the Cubans have pointed the finger at the Americans. The truth is, this is about communism. This is about socialism. This is about people <laughs> demanding freedom. They know that the lives of their families won't be better next generation. They know that their country is, was designated by me as a state sponsor of terror. Dude, he's literally bragging. He's bragging. Well, you know that they, they know that I, I designated their country as a state sponsor of terrorism. Yeah, that that's sanctions. That's a fancy way of saying I, I increased the sanctions on Cuba. That's that's literally what it means. He's fucking bragging on Fox News. Uh, you know, I sanctioned them. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> you motherfucker. Yeah, they do know. They do know that you did that. My goodness. It's funny how he's more honest than her. Like he's the only one to bring up sanctions, although he didn't he didn't say it outright. <laughs> oh God, they're so terrible. They know that things aren't good. The conditions of the of the evil leadership 
and the communist dictates of that leadership have, have spoiled their lives and they want freedom. You see them waving not only Cuban flags, but American flags. These are people who understand. And you, you, if you've seen anybody down in Florida who left Cuba, those exiles that are now living in America, they know freedom. They know the reality of it. They know the benefits of it. They know why it matters to their soul and their pocketbook. It's all the Cuban people are asking for. This isn't about the coronavirus. This isn't about an American plot. This is about the Cuban people demanding that their leadership fundamentally change their an American plot. You, you've literally been sanctioning Cuba for 60 years. You tried to fucking invade them. You tried to invade them in 1961. You sent the CIA sent an army. Remember Pompeo? I don't know. You know, he's probably in diapers at the time. Uh, but nonetheless, he himself, he's former director of the CIA. He knows damn well what the CIA has been doing in Cuba. He knows damn well. Anyone with a fucking brain, anyone who's read Cold War History 101 knows this shit. Uh, it's, it's not about some American plot. It's just, oh, you know, it's the evil communist. Dude, you know, you could take this transcript and, and, and remove the names, and I, could not, I cannot tell you if this is 2021 or it's 1969. I have no clue. I have no clue. Their ways. But, Mr. Secretary, they did kind of the same thing, did they not, during the Hong Kong protests? There was a very muted reaction uh, by the elites here in the United States. Obviously, we, we pointed out what the sports community was doing, uh, which was thwarting uh, real support of what was happening in Hong Kong. Uh, oh, no, the, the goddamn sports community. The sports community thwarted our coup in Hong Kong. <laughs> what does that even mean? What? Th this is, this is primetime cable. This is, this is the, the, the news that Americans get. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we have a lot of work to do, don't we? Oh, Lord. So basically, the entire premise of this segment is what? I was like, oh, look, the Democrats, they're not hawkish enough on Cuba, right? They're, they're, just, they're just keeping Pompeo sanctions, right, in place. Trump sanctions, all the other sanctions on Cuba, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, right? They're keeping all that, but they're still not hawkish enough. Still not hawkish enough, right? So... Words, apparently, words, this, this, is, this is more important than starving people, crippling their economy, making sure that, you know, they can't get out of uh, any kind of situation that is brought on by whether it's uh, economic beforehand or the pandemic, right? So we were talking last time about how because of the embargo, Cuba could not import syringes, ventilators. Th this is cruelty. You, you can't sit there like a civilized human being and tell me that this is okay, this is normal. Wait, what, what, what did the Cuban people do to you that you think it's okay to deprive them of, of syringes and ventilators? And during, like, any time, not just, especially during a pandemic, never mind during a pandemic. Th this is barbaric, honestly. And you know, I just want to remind you very quickly, that other uh, uh, mayor of Miami, Suarez, you know, he's, he's, he's like reminiscing all oh, the good old times and nostalgia, right? Like, oh, you remember when we fucked up uh, Kosovo? <laughs> remember when, when, when we went into other countries? He, for some reason, he said, like, Pakistan is a sovereign country when we fucking violated it and when we killed Bin Laden, who, you know, is a CIA asset. He, he also mentioned this. So, on this day, meaning December 20th in 1989, George H.W. Bush, that's, that's the, the bigger bastard, ordered 27,000 troops to invade Panama to overthrow former CIA asset Manuel Noriega, killing 5,000 people, dumping bodies in mass graves, and destroying thousands of homes. Ah, yes, the good old days. Yes. So that's what he's advocating for in Cuba, among other things, right? Among other things. Among other things. And then, of course, when we talk about this muted reaction, so let's look at the muted reaction as Laura Ingram. Yes, this great intellectual. This great intellectual. And Mike Pompeo and all these Republicans say, let's take a look what they mean by that. What are the Democrats saying that is so offensive to them? Let's take a look. So over here, Bernie Sanders. He says, all people have the right to protest and to live in a democratic society. I call on the Cuban government to respect opposition rights and refrain from violence. It is also long past time to end the unilateral U.S. embargo on Cuba, which has only hurt, not helped the Cuban people. Okay, so, so let's, get the, get, let's get one thing straight. This, this, entire, this entire first part is, is, is just garbage. I, that literally has nothing to do with anything. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. AOC says, we stand in solidarity with the Cuban people and condemn the suppression of the media, speech, and protest. We also call for an end to the U.S. embargo and additional Trump-era sanctions that are profoundly contributing to the suffering of Cubans. So, once again, 
Do you see how Bernie Sanders, AOC, they got to put this like little disclaimer over here, the usual American disclaimer? Like, look, the embargo is bad, but you're still a shit country, right? The embargo is bad, but you know, you got, you got to do things our way. The embargo is bad, but you know, here's some propaganda about Cuba, right? So th apparently they care so much about press freedoms, which is why Bernie Sanders and AOC, they're real, you know, and all the Democrats, all of them, the, the whole Democratic Party, they're such staunch advocates of uh, ending the persecution, right, of Julian Assange, because they care so much. They're, they're, so, they're so vehemently opposed to embargoes that they've also come out in support of, of uh, you know, asking Biden to end the sanctions, the Trump era sanctions, as they say, on Syria and Iran and Venezuela, right? Because they obviously understand that sanctions are bad. Oh, no, they haven't said shit about either of these issues. Oh, wow. That's right. It's just posturing, right? It's just, I'll, I'll release a little statement here, but I don't actually give a shit. I'm not going to fight for it. Here's another response from the Biden administration. You want, yeah. <laughs> Take a look. Homeland Security Chief says the United States will not give refuge to those fleeing Cuba and Haiti by boat. So, you know Mayorkas. We, we've looked at him reopening Trump's uh, cages. Remember the kids in cages, right? Allow me, quote, this is from... Mayorkas, allow me to be clear. If you take to the sea, you will not come to the United States. What does it say here? Mayorkas, a Cuban immigrant who fled the island with his family in 1960, issued his stern warning in the wake of seismic political events that have rocked Cuba and Haiti in recent days. Is it, is it a weird, again, you have this phenomenon of, of people who are like, fuck you, I got mine. You see this in the UK as well, you know? The Home Secretary, Priti Patel, she, she is bringing in these, these new immigration laws that her own parents would not qualify for. She was asked that because her parents immigrated to the UK. And someone asked her, a reporter asked her, would your parents be able to come to the UK under your, your own laws? No. <laughs> and this guy himself, right? They claim to love Cubans, but now they're saying, no, 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 no. You can stay there. You can keep starving under our sanctions. You can keep... You know, according to them, it's so it's so horrible over there, but they won't take anyone. What a, what a weird paradox, right? Cuba's apparently so such a hellhole. We know why. Thanks, Uncle Sam. But at the same time, no, we can't help you. You're not coming to the United States. Fuck you. I got mine. Wow, what what humanitarians, right? What humanitarians? What benevolent characters? Here we have some from Amnesty International. Of course, they also have to repeat the CIA bullshit. The Diaz-Canel government has addressed the social demands of its citizens given the economic crisis, the shortages of food and medicine, the collapse of the health system, which is not responding to the current COVID-19 crisis. Where's the mention of sanctions? How can you talk about Cuba and you don't mention sanctions? There, you know, don't get me wrong, man. People have legitimate grievances wherever they may be, right? I, I could talk to uh, another Syrian. They could also have legitimate grievances. Of course, right? But, but this, is not, this is not accurate. You can't come here and tell me that, oh, yeah. This is just because of the regime, right? They keep using this word, the regime in Cuba. They're to blame for everything. Really? Really? Is that so? I want to play you a little clip over here. This is, uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, his name is Stockwell. So he used to work for the CIA. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says about what the CIA does. Our contact man in Europe was... And we pumped just, just dozens of stories about Cuban atrocities, Cuban rapists. Uh, in one case, we had the Cuban rapists caught uh, and tried by the Ovimbundu maidens who had been their victims. And then we ran photographs that made almost every newspaper in the country of the Cubans being executed by the Ovimbunda women who supposedly had been their victims. But you, these were and, fake photos? Oh, absolutely. We didn't know of one single atrocity committed by the Cubans. It was pure, raw, false propaganda to, to create a, an illusion of communists, you know, eating babies for breakfast and that sort of totally false propaganda. But, you know, the CIA is reformed now. They, they would never do anything like that. I swear to God, there's some dude from the CIA on Twitter, right? Who said he's he's former CIA. He's got a little blue check, and he and he's like, okay, maybe the CIA has been misused a few times, but give me an example in the last 50 years, motherfucker. You're literally in Syria right now, trying to topple the government, <laughs> right now, right now. You've been kidnapping and torturing and uh, and and their whole rendition program. That's that's under Bush. That's under Obama. And I and I and I bet you your ass they're still doing it. 
You, what do you think the CIA is like? Oh, look, we're reformed now. We're, we're choir boys. We don't do nothing. That was back then. Yeah, and back then they were saying, no, we don't do this. But yeah, let's just swallow all this bullshit propaganda, you know, that they've been spewing about Cuba, about Syria, about Iran, about Venezuela. Why would the CIA lie? Why would the American media lie? They're fucking honest. Jesus Christ, I swear some people, they just, they just don't want to learn. They just don't want to learn. They refuse to learn, right? So again, we have this, this dilemma, right? Where people, they come along, whether it's politicians, pundits, I don't know. And they, they, they go, oh, you know, I'm anti-interventionist. Right? No, American imperialism is bad. But now I'm going to go and repeat all of the shit that the United States says to justify American imperialism or Western imperialism because it's U.S. and its allies. Right? So yeah, yeah, let's lift the embargo. But you know, Cuba is a dictatorship. Look what the communist regime has done. Oh my God, they haven't handled the crisis. Da 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 da. Oh, I'm against intervention in Syria, but Bashar Assad is a dictator. You fucking robot. You goddamn sheep. You fucking idiot. You telling me you've been sitting there for 10 years? We got troves of documents coming out how the CIA is funding jihadists, how the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office is creating fake news and disinformation campaigns against Syria, and you still believe that bullshit? And the same thing about Maduro. And the same thing about any country they don't like. So you have these people who, who think, who think that they're being neutral, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so neutral. You know, I'm, I'm objective. I'm in the middle. No, there's, no. When, when you come here, and you repeat the bullshit that came out of the State Department. These phrases, Assadist, the, the, these phrases like communist, right? Regime. That's not you. You, you didn't, that, you're, not, you're not thinking for yourself. You took that out of your ass. You've been indoctrinated with that. That's not you. You can't think for yourself. That's pathetic. That's, that's pathetic. That's, that's literally the antithesis of being objective. You're not objective. When you come here and you want to tell me that there's, you know... The, the embargo, 60 years of, of economic crippling, has done nothing in Cuba. This is brainwashing. That's not honest. You want to come here and tell me that these people want regime change? That's being dishonest. You're not being objective. You're not being neutral. You're being dishonest. Because that is not true. That's not the truth. That is not the truth. So, unfortunately, indoctrination is very powerful. And very unfortunately. And basically, the only difference between Democrats and Republicans is that, you know... They both want the embargo, right? They'll both talk about bombing Cuba. It's just that the Democrats, you know, they say let's lift the embargo. They say it. They say it, but they don't, they don't actually care about doing it. They don't care about the embargo, the, the sanctions on Syria, on Iran, on Venezuela. Those are all Trump, Trump sanctions, right? I thought, I thought Biden is better than Trump. Why is he keeping all of Trump sanctions? Can you explain that to me? Can you explain that to me? Why, why is he keeping Trump policies? Why did he roll back uh, some of them, right? But he kept the ones that starve people, that kill people, that ruin other countries' economies. The most vicious Trump policies, why did he keep them? Could it be that there's no difference except perhaps in decorum? Could it be? Could it be that these people telling you that Democrat is lesser of the two evils are full of shit? Here's a good tweet from Ryan. We had him on the show. Let's take a look at what he had to say in response to this tweet. So this is Julie Chung, okay? Acting Assistant Secretary for U.S. Department of State. Cuba's government targets anyone with a voice they cannot control. Police raided homes across the country, disappearing journalists, artists, even chess masters. Oh, wow. This sounds a lot like, uh, uh, you know, those uh, communists eating babies, right? They even kidnapped chess masters. Goodness gracious me. What will we, whatever will we do for the tournament? Raising your voice is a human right, but Cuba's government sees people speaking up for themselves as an existential threat. And what did Ryan say? Ryan says, I was visited by undercover cops 24 hours after I posted a mildly critical tweet of a U.S. government official. And that U.S. government official was AOC. So you want to come here and talk to me about, oh, attacking dissidents, oh, police state, oh, they're, they're repressing dissenters. Motherfucker, the United States is the number one in all those, those things. And that is factual. That is factual. That is proven. They even admit it. You just heard the CIA agent telling you how much they lie. He just says it so casually because they do it so casually. And then what does Biden do? What does Biden do? Look, this is what he has to say about Cuba, right? After he, he's keeping Trump's devilish, evil sanctions against those people. 
This is what he has to say. Today, your press secretary said that uh, communism is a failed ideology. I assume that's your view. I was wondering if you could also give us your view on socialism. Uh, Cuba is a, uh, unfortunately, a failed state in repressing uh, their citizens. Um, there are a number of things that we would consider doing to help the people of Cuba, but it would require a different circumstance or a guarantee that they would not be taken advantage of by the government. For example, the ability to send remittances to back to Cuba. Uh, I would not do that now because the fact is, it's highly likely that the regime would confiscate those remittances or big chunks of it. With regard to they need COVID on the, I mean, excuse me, they have a COVID problem on, in, on, in Cuba. I would be prepared to give significant amounts of vaccine if, in fact, I was assured an international organization would administer those vaccines and do it in a way that average citizens would have access to those vaccines. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things that uh, you did not ask, but we're considering is they have cut off access to the internet. Um, we're considering whether we have the technological ability to reinstate that access. D did you hear what he just said? He's, he's literally leveraging medical aid, right? Medicine against the Cuban people. That, that, that is categorically illegal. You cannot, you cannot deprive people of medical assistance. Uh, and the Cubans don't even want your, your goddamn help. They just want you to lift the embargo. That's it. Cuba is the, only, is the, is the first uh, a country in Central Latin America to develop its own COVID-19 vaccine. They send doctors all over the world. And the United States was lobbying other countries, bullying them. Lobbying is a nice way of saying bullying. Not to take in those Cuban doctors, right? Because as you all know, having hundreds of Marines occupiers with weapons and tanks this is okay but cubans are sending a few doctors no this is this is unacceptable this is immoral this is reprehensible this is incorrigible this is insufferable how dare they <laughs> wow so much for humanitarians right so now he's saying that we'll give them some aid if they do this and that no 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 they, they, they don't want your aid they want you to lift the embargo and then you have you have these schmucks you have these dishonest Bastards who come along and what do they say? They say, well, you know, Cuba's free to trade with whoever it wants. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because when Cuba or Syria or Venezuela or Iran want to go and buy something from, let's say, for example, a company that manufactures syringes, just as an example. And that company does business in the United States or is based in the United States. It doesn't even have to be from the United States. It could just have a, you know, an office there. It just does business with the U.S. in any capacity. The United States will say, if you sell those syringes to Cuba, we're going to send you to jail and fine you. That's how sanctions work. And it's not just with corporations, with, with, with companies, with, with you know, uh, buying goods. It's with services as well, with finances, any, anything, right? Even they could go and say, hey, you, I don't know, you, you're a, a company that you're an oil refinery. If you buy any crude from Venezuela or Iran, we'll kick you out. We'll fine you and jail you. Right? So this idea, oh, Cuba's free to trade with anyone. No, it's not. No, it's not because the United States is a monopoly. Uh, you know, half of, half of all uh, financial transactions in the world are done in U.S. dollars. Right? Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so you've already cut Cuba, Iran, Venezuela, Syria off from, from, you know, from that. Right? You're, you're isolating them economically on top of isolating them politically. So this is nonsense. And I wanna, I wanna read you a, a, a tweet here from Ben Norton. Shout out to Ben. Look what he says here. One of the stupidest talking points is that the US blockade on Cuba or Venezuela, Iran, etc., doesn't have a big impact and the country just blames the embargo. If they truly believe that, why doesn't the United States lift the blockade? So that they don't have an excuse because they know it's false. Amen. That's the truth. That is the truth. The U.S. government illegally imposes so, so many sanctions precisely because it knows that they're an effective form of hybrid warfare that destroys the economies of official enemy nations. And then Washington accuses the targeted country of mismanagement. Yeah, this is, this is exactly what's happening, right? This is exactly what's happening. This is what Dan Cohn posted, right?
The Colombian vice president, whose police forces have murdered 75 protesters in less than three months, urges Cuba, where one protester was killed in clashes with police, to, quote, respect the, <laughs> respect the right of protest. But of course, you won't hear about Colombia in the media. You know why? Because Colombia is a U.S. ally, right? When I was talking to, um, to Venezuela's foreign minister, who's a, who's a, he's a really great guy, he said that uh, Colombia's president is an employee of the United States, and I could not agree more, because that is the truth. That is the truth. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia for a second. Why, why have you never had a, uh, an Arab Spring in Saudi Arabia? You ever thought about that? Hmm? Why don't you ever hear in the media about how Turkey is jailing journalists and dissidents? Why don't you hear about what Israel does, its human rights abuses? Why don't you hear about Colombia killing protesters? Saudi Arabia, dude, they killed a Washington Post journalist, a U.S. Uh, resident. Biden refused to sanction. Trump refused to sanction. They did nothing. They let Saudi Arabia murder a Washington Post journalist, right? And now they come here and they, they pretend to care about <laughs> freedom of the press. 